Around my smart home, I've been starting to use more motion sensors. It's really cool, you walk by and then things can automatically happen but then you leave and then they turn off. That's about all they can do. So in today's video, thanks to the sponsor Akara, we're going to be testing out the new Akara Presence Sensor. This is the FP2, where this can distinguish between multiple people in the room, where they are sitting or where they move to. So it can unlock all kinds of different things within my smart home. Let's get started. Now right here on the front shows the little device. Here it shows it works with Apple Home. It will also work with other smart home products too. Over here on the side, it has multiple person detection. It has a built-in light sensor, fall detection and alerts, zone positioning, interference compensation, and then local automation. So it can just run independently of the network. So here to control with HomeKit, you do need to have an Apple HomeKit enable accessory to be able to do that like an Apple TV or a HomePod mini. All right, there is the sensor, a little bit bigger than I thought it might be. Inside, we also have an instruction manual, a USB-C to USB-A power cable. Here we have a screw mount, and then we have two magnetic mounts that we can use with 3M adhesive. So we'd be able to mount this wherever we want, and then we can simply attach it just by placing it on there. Then here on the back, you have the mount that can be used, so you can simply mount it like this, and then here you can adjust how that mount works. And then right there on the bottom is the USB-C and the Apple HomeKit code as well. So now we're gonna head into the Akara app to get this set up. We're going to tap the plus up here and add accessory. And then here over on the side, we have a bunch of different devices. We're gonna go with sensor. And then here we have the present sensor FP2. Here it's asking if the light is flashing. Yes, it is. Now we're going to choose our Wi-Fi and sign into that network. All right, now it is showing a blue light indicating that it is connected. So now it's showing the name and it's going to add it into a default room. That works for now. Here we can choose what the name is going to say on the device card. And then we can choose what the sensor looks like. So here we'll just have the person detecting a person. Then we can choose to add this device to the home page so it's easy to access. Then it has another sensor. So here it has an illuminance sensor. So we'll go ahead next. Then you have fall detection. And so it now added these three new sensors here in the Akara app. Now to use this device, an Akara hub is not required, but if you do want to use local automations, you will need to pick up the hub. So today I'll be binding it to the hub M2. So let's go ahead and choose the occupancy sensor. So you can see right now that it's detecting that I'm right here in front of it. So you would wanna use it where it's facing out. That uses the millimeter wave sensor that it has built in and can detect different people. Now let's go ahead and place the sensor in my room. Now I wanted to find a location that was able to detect the entire room. So here I placed it in the middle of the room and it's able to detect 120 degree angle. It's also able to detect six meters wide as well as eight meters long. So it's able to track this entire room that I have, which is really amazing. First thing we're going to do is set our edge. So we're gonna change our room size here to the appropriate room. So I'm just gonna go into zone management and I'm gonna create a new zone. And then here I'm gonna change the type of zone to edge zone. And I'm gonna put the color at gray. Now here you can see that when I go into this area, that is a wall. So I don't need to detect anything there. Also down here, it's not detecting anything. So my room is pretty big, so it fills this area really nice. But if I wanted to go and make my room smaller, I would just go in choose my color, and then I could drag to the appropriate size of my room, and then that would be the area that we're in because you wouldn't want it detecting all the way out here. Now this can detect up to five people. It's only seeing one person right now. Now here you want to adjust the installation mode. So it's gonna to talk to you about how it's going to be installed. Mine is just sitting here. It's not on the ceiling or anything like that. So I don't need to adjust that. So the first thing I did is I adjust my map. So if you tap zone management, you can then adjust the different zones here. So it's super easy to create a zone. All I need to do is tap new zone. And then here we can give our zone a name. We're gonna name this hallway. And now I just, tap and drag where I want that zone to be. We can then give it a color. So we're gonna name, we're gonna have this one be purple. Here we can adjust what type of zone it is. So you have detection zones, interference source, exits and entrances, and edge. So this is an exit and entrance. 
And so that looks great. We're going to tap save. So now that I've added that area, I can also adjust any other areas. And then you can also add up to 20 different stickers. So there are all kinds of different little stickers you can add there. Here you can see I added some sofas here so I can see when I'm sitting on the couch, have the dinner table, I have our island, the stovetop. Only thing that's missing is a fridge. So that'd be cool to be added. But then I added some other areas over here. So I have a cooking area, a counter area, an entrance area into the kitchen area. So a lot of things you can do there. You can also choose from these different templates that have already been created. But I found that the size of my room was perfect without needing to adjust the size and use any of the different templates. So now that we have our zones, now we just need to go back and it's going to update with the different zones. Down here, I have the option to adjust the presence. So here it's going to show me if there's presence in any of those areas. So you can see all that I have here. Let's go ahead and look at the cooking area. So I just recently put it in this room so you don't have more than a day's history, but it's nice that you can see when presence was detected. Here you can see when are we entering the kitchen. It's giving us all that information right there. And then if we go down, we can also check out the illuminance of the room. So this is great if I want to have certain things automate based on the light in the room. So at night you can see it gets all the way down there. And earlier it was really bright, but it is a little cloudy out there. So the luminance is going down. So we can see that it's gone all the way up to 708 illuminance today. And then it goes down to about zero at night when it is pitch black. So you have a lot of details there. And then if we go into the settings, you have a ton of other things that you can adjust as well. Here we have the functional settings. So here we can turn on the anti-light pollution mode. Here you have detection mode. So you can choose, is this going to be mounted on the ceiling? In our case, since it's mounted near the wall, we're gonna have the zone detection. So we can see up to five different people moving around in the different zones. So it's nice that you have those options there. Here we have presence detection sensitivity. So right now I have it on high. You could set it to medium or low. Here you have proximity sensing distance and then fall detection. We can have that low. Maybe we'll turn that up to medium and try that out and you can reset those settings there. Now this will receive matter support soon, so keep checking for updates. Now that we've created our zones for our rooms, what can we do with these? Well, we can create all kinds of different automations. So first, let's go ahead and check out what we can do here in the Acara app with other Acara devices. So if we go under automations, we can create a new automation. So here we can say if the presence sensor and then we can choose a zone so let's say if there is presence at what area, so let's say in the cooking area, then something could happen. Here in the Acara app, it's only able to use other Acara devices that I have a link to the app. So if I wanted it to automatically lock the door, or if I wanted it to play an alarm sound on my Hub M2 or stop playing music or other things, you can have that done right here in the app. So let's go ahead and say we want to lock the basement door. So I tap save. I can give it a name. So if presence in the cooking area, then basement door will be locked. So there we have created an automation. So you can do so many different things with different Acara devices you have. But I have all of my other devices linked to Alexa, Google Home, as well as HomeKit. So let's go ahead and look at how you can do this in there. So first let's head into the Google Home app. And now here we have those different zones here in the kitchen as well as the present sensor FP2. So if you just wanna detect anything that's happening in the room, you can do that or you can specify to the specific zones that you have created. Now, if you have already linked a car to Google Home and then you add the zones, these may not show up. So you may need to unlink and then link it again for them to show up. But now I can use all of these different zones to control different automations. So here I've already started an automation called FP2 table. So whenever we go to the table, I want it to automatically turn on the table light. So here we're gonna add a starter and we're gonna do when this device does something. And here, if we scroll down under sensors, there you can see all the different sensors or zones that we have created. So here under the dinner table, I can say when it detects motion, let's say anytime after five to 8.30 PM. And then we can set that to run every day and then select done. So now when motion is detected at the dinner table, it's then going to turn on the kitchen table. So that is one automation that we can create. Now, if you are using Amazon Alexa, as I was adding the different zones, it was automatically adding new sensors into the app. So here we could go under devices. Then here we have all devices. 
And here we have those different zones that have now been added into the Alexa app that we can use to create different routines in Alexa. Now to add the FP2 to HomeKit, you will need to add this as an accessory. I did hold down on the button for about five seconds, then it popped up, added it into the kitchen, and then all the different sensors showed up. Now it didn't give them a name, but that's no problem. You can then just simply watch the sensors, see which one triggers, and then name that. So now we just need to tap the plus, add automation, and here we have a sensor detect something. So we're gonna choose one of the occupancy sensors. Again, I'll need to go through and find out which one of these does something. So let's go ahead and choose sensor two. So here when it detects occupancy, then it's going to turn on a light in the kitchen. So we're gonna do island pendant lights next. It's gonna turn those on, and then we could have it automatically turn those off after a few minutes. And then you could also create another automation to automatically turn off lights when there's no presence detected. And here you can see that it also has a light sensor. So this is the light sensor from the FP2. So you can have automations based on the light in the room. Let's go ahead and try these out. Once we have our automations created, it's now time to test them out. So for these automations, I'm going to be using Apple HomeKit. I tried it in Google Home and it didn't work quite as well. The response in the automations weren't as quick, but here in HomeKit, they actually worked really well. Now the automations I'm doing today, I have it where it detects presence, it turns on a light. When it doesn't detect presence, it turns off the light. So let's go ahead and start with the counter space right here. So as soon as I enter the counter, boom, those lights turn off. And as soon as I leave, then they turn off. Over here, when I step in this food preparation area, it automatically turns on the main can lights above. I have that area set all the way around the island. So if I come over here, they're still going to come on, but if I move into the counter area, they turn off and the counter light turn on. Now let's say I'm done prepping my food and I'm ready to sit down at the dinner table and the lights automatically come on. So we're able to have all of these different zones operating different automations, different lights, all from one sensor, which is really amazing. And you can have up to 30 different zones created. I think that would be a little bit excessive, but we have plenty of options. All right, dinner's over. It's now time to relax over on the couch. And entering the living room, you can see that the shades automatically open up. I have it set so that when we leave the room, they automatically close. But when I come into the room, I wanna have the full view of the view outside. So with the shades automatically shutting when we're not in the room, I can block out sun and it's not going to overheat the room. And then when we come in, it opens up the shades so we have that nice view. Now when I leave the living room, it will then automatically shut them just like this. Now this demo is pretty extreme, so it's really cool to see how quickly it is able to interact with each zone within the HomeKit ecosystem. For your automations at home, you most likely will just have it turn on the table light for a few hours once you enter the room. You can also set different times of day when the automation is actually working and so on. So it's really nice to see how quick it can operate in those extreme automation circumstances. Now, if people are in and out of the room, multiple people, it does get a little bit slower, but I still saw the uh, automations automatically happen. If I was over here, these lights turned on. If somebody entered over by the table, those lights were able to turn on as well. So we have some really great automations that are able to interact just by having that one sensor instead of having multiple sensors in one room. Now it's really great to see that the FP2 presence sensor can just be set there in the corner of the room, or you can also mount it and there's a way to orient it in the app in case you wanna mount it here. And then when I leave the room, it will automatically turn off these under cabinet lights. Now the FP2 is also IPX5 water resistant. So if you do wanna place it in a bathroom or in a more wet location, it is going to withstand the water. So it's great to see that. And after using the FP2 for a few weeks, it's so great to see that it can do so much all in one little device. I don't need to have five different sensors in one room or even 30 different sensors because that's how many zones you can create, but I can just have this one device. It can automatically detect all those different zones. I have that light uh, sensor so it can determine how much light is in the room so I can make automations based on that. And then I also have that fall detection so I can use that here if I want to mount this to the ceiling. It will then notify me if somebody has fallen which can be useful in so many different ways. <laughs> 
I know many times my kids have fallen out of a chair. It would be nice to know why that is happening with those different alerts. And then it's great to see there are so many different ways in which you can customize exactly how the FPT works. If you want higher sensitivity, lower sensitivity, and turning off all those different features and zones and creating so many different customizations in the app with that map is really, really neat. So if you have any further questions about the Akara FP2 presence sensor, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to check out. And if you would like to check out the Akara U100 smart lock, you could check out the video right here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.